If there's a right way to do something, then there's usually a wrong way. And as pilots know, landings can provide many a long night's discussion on the right and the wrong ways to land an airplane. Mastering the normal landing, much less any of the variations on the technique, is challenging. And every pilot at some point will encounter the numerous difficulties mentioned under the blanket phrase of faulty approaches and landings. While this video will contain content on how to recognize and recover from a variety of abnormal landing situations, one cannot stress enough the importance of recognizing when to perform a go-around. Landings are not meant to be saved. With the immense number of variables present in any given approach, pilots are tasked with evaluating and correcting any changes that occur in the approach path. Generally, minor corrections are required. If at any time the approach becomes unstable, major corrections are required, or the pilot just feels that they should go around, an immediate go-around maneuver should be executed. While situations and errors during an approach and landing are truly infinite, analysis and experience has led the FAA to group some of the most common issues into the Airplane Flying Handbook. As the second topic in this series, this podcast will address issues specific to timing. These being high roundout, late or rapid roundout, ballooning during roundout, and bouncing during touchdown. Just like the punchline in a good joke, timing is everything, and it can make or break a good approach. With each of these errors, the approach itself can and often is a contributing factor. Despite this, a near flawless approach can terminate poorly due to improper perception and timing of control application. Proper timing and correct control application is the result of practice and experience. Use of an aiming point will dramatically increase the effectiveness of training and practice. For a more detailed description on the normal landing, review the UND Aerocast episode entitled Normal Approaches and Landings and consult an experienced, certified flight instructor. When judging the timing and aggressiveness of the roundout, pilot perception and elevator and power inputs are critically important. If the roundout has been made too early or rapidly, the aircraft will appear to hang or level out above the runway. This is known as the high roundout. The consequence of the high roundout places the aircraft too high above the runway with an angle of attack quickly approaching critical. To prevent a bad situation from becoming worse, the pilot must avoid adding additional back pressure to continue that roundout. Doing so will result in a stall and extremely hard landing. With adequate airspeed, proper recovery is accomplished by carefully holding the pitch attitude constant until the aircraft decelerates enough to begin descending again. The pilot then continues adding pressure for the second roundout and establishes the landing attitude. During the initial phase of the recovery, it may be possible to relax some back pressure, but the pitch attitude should be constant. Power may also be required to maintain adequate airspeed for the roundout and prevent an excessive descent rate. If the nose must be lowered significantly, or if the landing is uncertain, an immediate go-around must be executed. The late or rapid roundout results from a pilot failing to recognize when the roundout should have been initiated. As the ground rapidly approaches, the pilot's natural reaction is to apply excessive back pressure to prevent touching down prematurely or land hard. If elevator control is applied too rapidly, the excessive load factor can induce an accelerated stall, resulting in an extremely hard landing and likely bouncing on the main gear. Not doing anything or a late reaction will have a similar result, but with a possible nose wheel first bounce. The key to a proper recovery is in prompt and positive application of power. The landing phase requires the pilot to fly smoothly on the back side of the power curve. During the roundout, the room for error is very minute. If greater back pressure is required compared to the ideal approach and landing, the pilot must be vigilant for accelerated stalls and increase power with back pressure application. 
The greater the elevator control required, the greater the power needed to balance the drag. If there is sufficient runway available, a normal landing could follow this recovery. In most cases, however, an immediate go-around is the best option.